welcome back. I'm Pastor Cat. This is your weekly encouragement. So we're going for a hike today at a Riverside State Park here in Spokane, Washington. Thought I'd bring you along for the ride. Beautiful day. So today I thought we'd talk a little bit about judgment in the life of the believer, how we're supposed to judge one another and ourselves, and uh, most importantly, how we are not supposed to judge. You know, it's really easy to find fault in another person. Typically when I find fault in someone else, it's because I have that same fault in me, and so it's easy to see. So Christ actually cautions us to be very careful. In fact, in Matthew chapter seven, he says this, do not judge so that you will not be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. You see, when we judge someone else, we are inviting that same judgment upon us. Not only is it the same judgment over the same stuff, but in the same way or level that we judge, that is judgment that we're calling down upon ourselves. James expands on this idea over in James chapter two, where he says, for judgment will be merciless to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. I love that turn of phrase. Mercy triumphs over judgment. See, exactly the same way we judge, that's how we're judged. If we don't show mercy, then we are not going to receive mercy either. You know, when we judge typically, we're actually hiding our own hypocrisy, right? The things that we are ashamed of or the things that we wish were better about us and really pointing them out in one another. This reminds me of a story. There was a woman who was found in sin. She'd been pulled out into the city square and men were surrounding her and they were about to stone her. Christ comes along, tries to figure out what's going on, immediately falls down on one knee and begins to draw in the dirt. I'll pick up the passage in John chapter eight. It goes like this. When they persisted in asking him, he straightened up and said to them, he who is without sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone. After this, of course, if you finish the passage, no one threw a stone. You see, it's very easy for me to pick on someone else's sin. It's much more difficult to look at my own sin. Ultimately speaking, only God has the right to be a judge and or jury of my sins. That's spelled out really clearly in Romans chapter 14. Uh, we'll start at verse four. It says this, who are you to judge the servant of another? To his own master, he stands or falls. He will stand for the Lord is able to make him stand. I think this is a great way for us to look at judgment in our lives and in the lives of people we come into contact with. They're not serving us, right? They're only serving the Father himself. So the Father gets to be the one to judge what their work was like, whether it was worthy or unworthy. So next time you come into contact with someone who's living in a way that you don't approve of and you think they're living in sin, you would be very cautious about exactly how you approach that. We are to be iron sharpening iron. We are to lift one another up at the same time. We can never forget they're not our servant, they're God's. He's the one who gets to do the actual judgment. Well, I hope this has been as encouraging for you as it has been for me. God bless, I'll see you next week. Be encouraged.